This is a Woodside Church Sunday. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Woodside Online. My name is Devi. If I haven't met you before, I'm going to share some news with you before we move on to the preach. We were supposed to have a church picnic a couple of weeks ago, but it got rescheduled due to the high weather, high temperature weather warning. Um, but now it's being rescheduled to the 28th of August at the same venue, same time, which is right after church on the 28th of August. So we can't wait to see you all there. If you need any more information, please check the website below. So now over to the preach. Good morning. morning. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. 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 Hallelujah. How many of you are happy this morning? Hallelujah. Only one voice here comes, I am. How many of you are really happy this morning? Hallelujah. Can you wave your hands? I'm an Indian preacher. I want interaction, please. (laughs) Yeah, somebody said to me in my ear there, Mohan, you've got 10 minutes. (laughs) So hope that I will finish in time. If the time permits, I'll ask the band to come back. I don't think I have time, but let's uh, focus on the word of God. Sometimes after the worship, you know, oh my God, worship is finished, let me relax. Yeah, come on, let's stand, let's stand, let's uh, acknowledge the presence of God. Let's, let's stand, let's stand, let's stand. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, he's here. Before you come into this building, he's here. You heard the testimonies of healing. Testimonies of goodness of God. He's here. If you have come with expectation to receive a healing, a breakthrough, something unique to happen in your life, this is a moment to ask God. Come on. Yes. He's here. Where two or three gather, I am there, he said. We are more than two here, and I am assured that he is because we are focused upon him. We are gathered here because of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your presence in our midst. Thank you as we worship, as we sit and relax, whatever you are working in our hearts. Oh, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Please take your seats. You all know that we are doing a series. So if you've got a Bible, you can open to Matthew 6, which will come on the screen a bit later. But if you are a guest here this morning, I want to tell two things. One, that we are preaching through what's called as Lord's Prayer. God is unpacking and unlocking the truth, the the truth of His Word through this prayer. Hallelujah. And second thing, if you are looking, if you come here looking for a Bible-based church, I want to assure you, you are in the right place. You have come to the right place. This is the church which is based on the word of God, not on anybody's reputation, not on anybody's intellectual things. We are based, I take this opportunity to, on behalf of the elders, I say we based on the word of God, not on our reputation. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's two things. <clears throat> this series, you know, as I said, God is unlocking the truth through this prayer. As we begin, I want to say that if this prayer does not change your life, then you have missed the point of prayer altogether. It's simply just gone right over your head. You might have taken the prayer very lightly, thinks, oh, you are Christians, prayer is a common thing. But if you miss that prayer together, means you are lost in this. That's why I think God has given a vision for our elders to come with a series on Lord's Prayer. This prayer, the Lord's Prayer is not, it's just not a prayer that you recite. This is a prayer which deals with your past, deals with your present, and deals with your future. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the Lord's Prayer we call it as. So today, we're going to look into verse 12. So if you have the, got the Bible, you can open, or if you can see on the screen, you can see Matthew 6, 12. And so far, 
You know, it's amazing preachers preach, especially last week, Collins, beautiful. You know, how God speaks, you no, know, he changed his title of the preach as soon as he, you know, in the worship. Praise God for that. And then he brought the, the meaning of God's will and then called our own people as saints. Wonderful. I'm going to use that one. <laughs> Praise God. Matthew 6, 12. And forgive us our debts. In other translation, it is trespasses. We also have forgiven our debtors. So this week, we look into forgiveness request. Actually, I'm supposed to preach this topic next week, but because I'm not available next week, I requested our Saint Luke Clements. <laughs> I, I learned from Collins last week. Yeah. <laughs> so he is kindly agreed. Moan, you can, but you don't change the topic. You preach the same topic. And next week, Abhi is going to share the request on food. So this week you are looking into forgiveness request, and the next week we are going to look into bread request. <laughs> both are basic and both are essential. Man's deepest physical need is for food. Yes, we may have big, big bank balances, big, big things, and you know, we may forget the basic need is for food. Yeah, I am come from that down-to-earth family, and then the village where I lived, they just work for one meal. The whole day they toil themselves for one meal. I tell you, they are so blessed people because they don't have any worries of the world. Just they go for work and then eat and then relax. So the man's deepest physical need is for food and man's deepest spiritual need is for forgiveness. Amen. Hallelujah. So today's topic is as we see in the screen, it is Forgiveness. You see, we all made messes in our life. Don't think that you are the only one who messed up your life. We all messed up our lives from young to old. I'm looking at my batch, they're all youngsters. From young to old, so I'm counting Charles Uncle and Uncle Rod, everybody. What a beautiful contributions they bought. Praise God. Praise God for elderly people. Because with their experience, we can learn more. Hallelujah. Let the dream of Charles' uncle come true in, this, in our church. Hallelujah. Let our lives be shaped and colored, shined for the glory of God. Wow. Praise God. See, I'm, I'm going away from my notes now. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm so excited with this. So we all make mistakes. We all messed up our lives. So we all made messes in our lives, in our relationship with God, in our relationship with one another. And therefore, we all experience a thing called guilt or a thing called resentment, the bitterness. Life is always difficult, but it always burdensome when we go through life carrying a load of guilt or a load of resentment in our lives. So my question to you today how would you like to get rid of all of your guilt and all of your resentment or bitterness? When you are forgiven, when you understand God in heaven has truly forgiven you for whatever sin you have committed, it's only when you have realized that you have forgiven is your guilt removed. That's why we say there is no condemnation for those who believe in Jesus, those who are in Christ Jesus, sorry. Hallelujah. So when you, are, when you realize that your sins are forgiven, then that guilt is removed. In the same way, when you learn to forgive others who wronged you, is it a word wronged is there? I'm not English medium school. There is a word wronged, yeah? Hallelujah. I got it, revelation. <laughs> so when you learn... To forgive others who wronged you, hurt you, who did all sorts of things against you. So when you learn to forgive such people, then your resentment is gone. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. What a beautiful thing. What a mighty God we serve. So now, guilt and resentment are human emotions. When we do something wrong, we live with guilt. We live Every day with resentment, bitterness in our hearts. It stays with us. So when we live in a state of guilt, 
There are many different ways we deal with that because we have to keep living. We have that resentment, that guilt in us, and we carry on with that, you know. So one thing we do to deal with such thing, the way that we do is that we do excuses. So we've done something wrong, but we'll put some excuses. We'll keep on giving, oh, because of that, ah, I don't want to do this one. For example, yes, we all have to come to church. And we have 101,000 of excuses not to come to church. I'm not saying that it is a guilt and things like that. That's one of the examples. We can easily say excuses that, oh, I'm too tired, or my child is not well, my this is not... You can put any excuses, but you don't address, deal with the guilt. We keep you know, giving that excuses in our lives. Someone else will, he's, you know, you know we, we sometimes compare. We compare ourselves with someone else who is gr- more greater, guiltier than us. Then we feel better. Oh, that person is more guiltier than me, so we will feel a bit better. And then we try to compare and then try to look that guilt is, you no. Know, but by doing that, you are not erasing the guilt in your heart. You are not removing that. Oh, you are trying to put excuses that will not remove your guilt. You are trying to compare with somebody, oh, he is more difficult than me, and you feel better than that person, but that will not erase your guilt from your heart. Some of us do not think about it. Ah, I don't want to think about that guilt at all. Oh, I don't want to remember it at all. You know, whatever the wrong we did in our lives. But not going to think about it will not arise that guilt that we call as a living in denial. The problem is none of these situations will work to remove that guilt in us. Jesus said that one thing that can free you from guilt and resentment and that one thing is forgiveness. In the text, Jesus shows us how to overcome the grief of guilt and the resentment or bitterness, bitterness in our lives. The only remedy, the only remedy for guilt to be guilt to guilt is to receive the forgiveness that is yours from Jesus Christ. It is from heaven, from the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only Remedy for bitterness or resentment that someone sins against you or someone offends you or wrongs you that you learn and able to forgive them. I wanted to look down a couple of verses down below. It's not there in the thing, but if you open your Bible and if you know this verse, you know, after the sixth verse, if you go down 14th and 15th, Jesus digs deeper into this forgiveness. He says, If you forgive men when they sin against you, your Father in heaven will also forgive you. And he continues in 15th verse, If you don't forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive you, forgive your sins. So we are going to learn four things from this because Jesus is pointing out straight to the forgiveness. Number one, are you ready? Some other things to learn. So now we know that we carry the guilt and the resentment in our lives, in day-to-day life, but we need to get rid of it. That only comes from receiving the forgiveness. Number one, sin is a universal problem. Forgiveness is a universal need. Man, there are so many things in that. I didn't know that so many verses are there. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it's only two lines will come. (laughs) Sin, I repeat that one. Sin is a universal problem. Hence, forgiveness is a universal need. Because Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. All have done mistakes. All have done wrongs in our lives. All of us gone wrong. Sin is a universal problem. Proverbs 29 says, Who can say? Who can say I have kept my heart pure? I am clean and without sin. Who can say? The answer is obvious to this question. No one. No one can say. 
But by the way, the word debt in NIV is the word trespasses. Trespass means when you break into an area where you do not belong, whether it is intentional or unintentional. A debt is a failure to pay what you owe. Hallelujah. Debt is a failure to pay what you owe. The word forgive means literally to cancel a debt. To cancel a debt. And sin is a debt that all of us have or done because we have sinned. We have sinned against God. But praise God, Jesus took care of your debt and my debt on the cross. Isaiah 53, you know, where Isaiah reminds us about Jesus Christ, 53, 5 to 6. But he was, he is Jesus, was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. And it continues in the sixth verse. We all, we all like sheep gone astray. We are all gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own ways. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He has taken all of that, all of our debts. We can never, we can never ever pay the debt that, the things that which you have done done wrong. The only remedy for this debt is to declare spiritual bankruptcy. We have to declare, I cannot pay this one. Let someone else pay that debt for us. That is exactly what Jesus Christ has done on the cross of Calvary for us. Hallelujah. Jesus did for you and for me. I cannot pay. You cannot pay the debts that you have in your life and you had in your life. Forgiveness is costly. It may be free for you and me. It is costly. It is not cheap. We may think it is cheap, but it's not cheap to God. It's costed his own son. Hallelujah. It's not cheap to God. It costed his son. Sin is a universal problem, and forgiveness is a universal need. So that takes me to next point. This prayer which Jesus is teaching us to pray is very serious prayer. It's very, very serious prayer. This is a risky request. A daring prayer. A dangerous prayer. You know, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. It is dangerous prayer. Now I want to think about this. You are asking God to forgive you. And we all want God's forgiveness in our lives. Amen? Amen. Say amen. We all want God's forgiveness in our lives. But we are not asking just forgiveness. You are asking God to forgive you and the same way that you forgive others. In other words, Lord, look at me. Look at me. The way I forgive others, the way I forgive others, you look into me in the same way, please forgive me. Am I right in putting that one? Good. So, so this is what your prayer, that's why I'm telling it is a bit risky prayer. We always pray, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for my, this mistake. But we miss the other part. There's a bridge as you forgive as we forgive others. No? So, so that, 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 that bit we need to understand that God forgives so that you may be able to forgive others. Hallelujah. You see, whenever we refuse to forgive others, it sets off the terrible chain reaction. It sets off completely. It breaks. All of them are negative. Now, when you fail to forgive, when you fail to forgive, when we fail to forgive, the next slide says, there are four things I wanted to say. The consequences of when you fail to forgive, it disgraces our heavenly father. You got the answer there, all of them. It disgraces our heavenly father when you not forgive. Because he said that 
Love your neighbors as yourself. Now, when you don't love and when you don't forgive, when you fail to forgive, it disgraces our Father in heaven. Number two, it discourages the saints, the elders, the counselors, the prophets. They are there. They'll go on and uh, tell about that you need to forgive others. And then if you don't forgive, it makes them discouraged. I don't know how many times... Uh, um, Dev, Devanish has gone through that situation. I have gone as a, I don't know if, I, if I compare with Dev, Devanish, you know, I am a little boy in his, in, his, in his experience and in his knowledge of God, his experience of, you know, the anointing and spreading the gospel. You know, I have learned so many things from him and in this church. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that when you try to tell somebody to forgive others, they say, hmm. That discourages the ministers, the saints. Number three, it disgusts the lost. We are the only Bible that they will see. You and me carry the word of God. We are the temple of God. When they see, and then when you have this spirit of unforgiveness, they will see, and then they'll st- started to doubt about the gospel itself. They cannot be able to see the beauty of Jesus because they can able to see the ugly attitude of unforgiveness in us. That will break the body of Christ. Unforgiveness. The final one, the fourth one is it delights The devil, the only person who is very happy, very joyous and dancing is the Satan, the enemy. He tries to put all sort of, you know, unforgiveness in the church, try to break the church. Because of one unforgiveness, other person will be offended and that offends the whole church and it will start dividing the church. Oh, today Moon is preaching. I don't want to go and listen to him. He offended me. I don't want to go. That he is very happy there. He will be very, very happy. Church can run out of room. Church can run out of parking spaces. Church even can run out of money, but may never run out of God's love and forgiveness and grace in the church. Amen. Let's put our hands together. That is what the church is. That is what the church is. We can never run out. We can never run out of that forgiveness. We can never run out of God's love. We can never run out of God's grace in our lives as a church together. Hallelujah. Praise God. It brings me to the third point. This is the key, what Jesus is trying to teach us through this prayer. If you refuse to let them get off the hook... Actually, you are the one actually on the hook. Remember, if you refuse to let them get off the hook, if you fail to forgive your neighbor, if you fail to forgive your friend, if you fail to forgive your relative, if you fail to forgive your colleague, actually, you are the one on the hook. The forgiveness, the true forgiveness is giving people what God has already given to you. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. Hallelujah. Some of you listening here, you're holding onto a grudges, grudge from people who have offended you, hurt you. You are holding on to you. You are not going to let it go. You are holding on to it. I wanted to let you know you are actually being captive by your own grudge, by your resentment, by your bitterness, by your unforgiveness. You are hostage for yourself. When you learn to forgive others, you set a prisoner free and you will discover that prisoner is you. (laughs) Hallelujah. There's a golden rule. I think I got another 10 minutes if I'm right. There's a golden rule. 
do unto others as you would have them to do to you. But actually, I consider it as not golden. I consider it as a silver rule. The golden rule is this. Do unto others as God has done unto you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Choose. You can choose not to forgive or you can choose to forgive. In spite of what they have done to you, in spite of everything that people hurt you, offended you, you have everything that you can choose not to forgive or choose to forgive. I wanted to know while Jesus on the cross, suffering on the cross, dying on the cross, he said these words, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. In the midst of his pain, in the midst of his suffering, he was able to pray, Lord, forgive them. He is putting a, a setting a precedent for all of us. In your suffering, in the most painful situation, you can able to forgive others. When Jesus has put that precedent, we can use as, him as an example and we can forgive in whatever situation we are in. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. I don't know where I am. So there are, before, when, when, you, when you learn, when you learn to forgive others, when you, you know, you wanted to know and uh, forgive others and then you have intention to forgive us, but you should know how you have been forgiven before. So you have been forgiven instantaneously, instantly. You are forgiven instantly. God didn't wait. Oh, you Mohan, stay for six months. Change yourself. Know me better. And then and come. No, he didn't say, turn unto me. And the Bible says, when the men turn unto him, he said, he poured out his mercy immediately. So he will accept you as you are instantaneously. That means when you have been offended, got the hurt, you need to forgive others instantly. Number two, repeatedly. Oh, how often I have to forgive? God has forgiven our sins. God has forgiven our all the things that what we do wrong. Repeatedly, over and over, again and again, he has been forgiving us in the same way we need to forgive others as well. No matter how many times they have offended you. Because we are unique. We are extraordinary people. Hallelujah. And then God has forgiven us our sins completely. It is not that part that he has forgiven and part he has kept. No. He has taken your sins once for all. From everything, 100% you have been forgiven. In the same way, you need to forgive others. Oh, I'm going to forgive this time, but don't do next time about this. Okay? Don't do this one again. But Jesus is teaching us, keep on forgiving. Keep on forgiving Last one is tracklessly. There is no track. You know, Jeremiah 31, 34 says, For I will forgive their wickedness and will, will remember their sins no more. They will, he will never remember again. He will not bring it again. But we put in a memory bank. When the time comes, okay, I've forgiven, but when the time comes, see, look, on that year, on that day, you told me like this, we will bring the list of wrong things, which is in the past, because we kept in the memory. We need to understand how God has forgiven us and then forgotten about it in the same way, when you forgive somebody, you need to forget completely. No need to go back. Love will never keep any wrongdoing, record of wrongdoings. It will never bring it back. Once you are forgiven, forgiven. Hallelujah. Yeah. Final thing. Bah, four minutes. To change, to change, you are, no, we are all been emotion because we are human beings. We got emotions. You know? As I said, we are, we, we are human beings. We are with emotions and all sorts of bitterness and things like that. To change your emotions, you have to change your devotion. I can preach this one for a whole day. To change your emotion, you have to change your devotion. Don't make your wrong your God. They ruined my reputation. Forget about your reputation. Throw in the bin your reputation. Don't make your hurt your God. 
Jesus Christ is the Lord. He is our God. Our heavenly Father is our God. Not my reputation. Not my what I'm doing. God is God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus is our Lord. Some people say that when some of us will say, oh, I don't want to forgive them. They hurt me too much. Some people may say, I don't feel like I have been forgiven. To change that emotion, you need to spend time with God. Jesus teaches us. Before he taught the disciples how to pray, he taught them how not to pray. He said, don't be like hypocrites, keeping your heart somewhere and then throwing the words and get, try to get the upload from the people. No, don't do like that. Don't be like hypocrites. That's a big word. You know, I, I got this meaning of hypocrites is simple, play actors. So don't be like that. Don't be like heathens. Don't be like pagans. Don't use the repeated, pray through the heart. Our Father is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. That is how we have to come. That is what he is teaching us. For that, we need to shut our door, be in the presence of God. As I always say, if you are called as a Christian and if you neglect the prayer which I started with, don't call yourself as a Christian. Prayer is a weapon for us to go in the presence of God. Shut the door. When you shut the door, you are actually opening another door of heaven, the blessings to come and the revival to come from us through the nation. Hallelujah. So let us Go into the presence of God. Let us change our devotion. Let us go. When you hurt, go and pray more. Of course, as a human, the, the feelings is not to go in the presence of God. But that is the time you need to get into the presence of God and cry out for the person who has hurt you. Then you are able to do what God has done to you in your life. Hallelujah. I don't think I got a time to share a personal experience. Quickly share. When I came into this country, quickly, two, 30 seconds. When I came into this country, there was a beautiful thing was going on. And then I was so excited. Yeah, I was so excited to join that event and then be a part of it. And suddenly, somebody said, you're not allowed to come there. It hit me completely. I carried that hurt Six years. Though my mouth said, I have forgiven, but my heart didn't forgive. That is not what God is teaching. God is teaching that forgive completely. No need to remember. One day, I thank God for the people in this, in this church. I, I don't mind taking their name. I can take the name. My brother and my friend, my mentor, Nigel, who called me and held me, this is what the Lord is saying to you. You have been carrying a hurt in your heart for so many years. God wants to release that one. That's the reason we need to come to church. That's the reason you need to have the fellowship. That's the reason we need to build ourselves in the fellowship of God. That's why we need to come to church as well. Because there are people like Nigel everywhere in this church. Once you talk, God may speak to them and then build one another. We need to have that fellowship. I can sit at home and watch online thousands of sermons. Different, different good sermons, good services. But God asks us to have a physical fellowship. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is where God speaks. Praise God. Praise God like people like that. Encouraged and released. I never, today I'm bringing it back only because to give an example. Let us spend more time in the presence of God. Let's stand in the presence. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you for teaching us the power of forgiveness. Yes, Lord, we need to forgive one another as you have forgiven our sins. Lord, as a church, Lord, we pray, bring all of us in one unity, with one mind, one spirit, one accord, so that we may join hands together to declare your power, your gospel, and to manifest your power across this city, across this nation, and beyond. 
Lord, here we are. Mold us and shape us. Help us not to live in our hurt. Help us not to make them as our gods. Instead, Lord, you be our God, Lord, teaching us as Uncle Charles brought, we wanted to shine. We wanted to be colored by you. We wanted to be seen, O oh Father Lord Jesus, as your child, as your servants, O oh Father Lord Jesus. Help us to forgive, Lord. Yes. Remove all the hurts, O oh Father Lord. Give the strength as we spend time in your presence, O oh Father God. Give us the strength. With our own strength, we cannot overcome. But in your presence, we gain the strength from you so that we may able to forgive, Lord Jesus. We may able to learn to forgive, Lord Jesus, oh Master God. We thank you for your power working in us. We give you all the glory. Thank you for speaking to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please take your seat. Thank you very much for listening to me. May God bless you. Thanks for joining us. For more information, visit woodsidechurch.com or follow us on social media.